Well, hello there. What do I got working on here? Okay. So I have an ESP8266 development board here, just because they're easier to work with than just a regular 8266. Uh, did I say that right? Yes. Anyway. Um, so all I've done is I've programmed this, and if you watched uh, the stream I did on my main channel recently, I uh, recently did this project, but now I'm doing it again for a second pump. Uh, so what I've soldered here is power to this power supply right here. And what this power supply does is takes uh, up to 240 volts and knocks it down to the 5 volts needed for our ESP chip here. And this is going to be going on the outside of my house. And it's going to be hooked to a pump in my water tank. Now, uh, I tested the power supply before I soldered it on here. Uh, hooked it up to the uh, high voltage at the water pump and uh, I checked it and it got 5 volts out. So now I've soldered it on here and it's going to be going outside so I'm going to very cheaply put this in a weatherproof enclosure. So far uh, what I've done, the same thing I did with the first project, is I've coated the top of the board here, all the electronic parts, uh, electronic components, with uh, clear nail polish. It's a cheap way to kind of prevent some corrosion and stuff. Then I'm going to put it in a waterproof enclosure, weatherproof enclosure, aka a thick Ziploc bag. Um, and what we're going to do is, again, hook this to the power. Uh, it's actually the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the pressure gauge for my pump. And it's a, it's a little pressure sensor that when the pressure drops below a certain amount, it turns on the pump. Also turning on this ESP8266, which has been programmed to automatically connect to my Wi-Fi. And as soon as it connects, send an HTTP request to my web server. Then it waits five minutes and it sends it to another HTTP request to another URL on my web server. And for every minute after that that it's on, it will send a, that to that second address, both log to a log file. But the second one, if it runs for five minutes or more, every minute it's also going to be texting me. The reason I'm doing this is because I've recently had a pump that ran and ran and ran and ran, an underground pump, uh, due to another problem that wasn't shutting it off. And that's close to a thousand dollar problem. This is three dollars and change. This is three dollars and change. Six dollars total. And it will alert me if, there, if the pump is running for more than five minutes repeatedly. And it also logs every time it runs so that I can see how often it runs. Because the one in the ground only runs, I know because I set up one of these a couple of weeks ago, a few times a day. The one in the tank though, runs regularly throughout the day. Uh, so let's go ahead and check this out and see if we can get hooked up. Okay, so if I didn't say at the beginning, don't do this unless you know what you're doing, which I don't necessarily know what I'm doing, so don't necessarily do this. <laughs> and be careful when you're working with high voltage. Um, again, don't do this unless you know what you're doing. Also, if you live in Florida in the summer, don't wear a black shirt outside. It's a bad choice. So right here is um, my pressure gauge. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. Currently I have everything unplugged, but the power comes in this wire here and goes to these two screws. And then when the pressure inside this tank, uh, or the pressure, in, actually not the pressure inside the tank, but the pressure going to the house drops below a certain amount, the pump inside this tank uh, will kick on when this connects. So let me say that again, because I didn't say it quite clearly. When the pressure going to the house drops below a certain amount, because there's a bladder valve past this pump uh, that pressurizes the house, when it lowers to a certain pressure, this kicks on. This little connector connects, connecting the power here, which will turn on the pump. Also, it will go down to our little transformer here, knocking it down to 5 volts, and to our ESP8266, which as you can see, I have my Ziploc bag here. Again, I'm not saying this is a great setup. Uh, so I'm going to put this inside the Ziploc bag, tape it to the outside of this tank here. So again, what will happen here is when that turns on, it will connect to my Wi-Fi inside, and then it will send an HTTP request to my web server logging that the pump has gone on. But if it runs for more than five minutes, it will start sending a request to a different URL, which will not only log it, but alert me every minute that it's running. As long as the pump turns off in less than five minutes, which it should, shouldn't be running that long, uh, I should only get, which it just tried to turn on, but it's unplugged, so my wife probably doesn't have any water inside. So let me finish this up, and uh, I'll talk about it more. So again, I want to make it very clear, I'm not necessarily saying to do this. This is the sort of thing I do, and unless you know what you're doing, don't do it. Anyway, my cover's back on, everything's plugged in, I have my weatherproof 
quotation marks, enclosure here uh, with the little transformer. And it's basically, think of it as like your cell phone charger, just instead of prongs, it has wires that connects to the higher voltage coming in. And so again, when the pressure goes low, this will kick on, connect to my Wi-Fi, and alert me of any problems. So that's it, super simple, super cheap. Again, six, seven dollars. Now, I originally had planned on doing this a while ago. I bought the parts, and then I never did it. And then I had a problem with the tank here where the little dip valve, uh, dip switch, wasn't turning on. So I had to order a new one, and I was planning on when it came in, hooking up the one for the first pump. This is the second pump here. And, um, and when it came in, I found it funny that it came with paperwork that you could order a Wi-Fi uh, enabled uh, pump alert starting at, I think it was like $89. I don't know the details on how that worked other than that it was to alert you of problems using Wi-Fi. The device started at 80 some dollars. I don't know if there was a monthly charge for a service or if you had to install proprietary software on your computer to connect to it. I don't know how it all worked, but I assume it's something like that. Something it had to be connecting to something. And so they're either selling a service that you'd have to pay for regularly and be using their servers or you had to install some proprietary software uh, that probably wouldn't run on my computers and who knows uh, what it actually would be doing. So this is super simple because all it's doing, oh, there, it just kicked on. So it should be connecting to my Wi-Fi now and then it will log it again. Now, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Super simple, but again, even if my weatherproof enclosure doesn't work and this goes bad, seven dollars I'm out at most but so far my other one has worked and it's been a couple of weeks and it's worked great it's giving me more information on my pump I now know how often it runs the, every third day or so it should run in the middle of the night to run it through the water softener here and that's very hot <laughs> it's hot here in Florida and um, and so I know what days it's running I can and I've I just know a lot more about when my first pump's running. again this pump's gonna be running a lot more than the pump in the ground um, but I don't know how often but it's going to be great to have those alerts because I have had cases where this pump inside here has come loose and so it's leaking water so it never builds up the pressure so it's constantly running and the only way I really know is that if I pay attention I can hear it running when I'm outside and if I constantly hear it running which I don't normally pay much attention to or the water inside my house gets very very hot because the pump is running so much that the pump gets hot and it comes out of my faucet almost scalding even when you put on the cold water uh, and that's happened to me twice in the seven or eight years that I've lived here so now, hopefully, when that starts happening, I'll know right away. So I do thank you for watching. Uh, again, this is the, not the only thing. You can do this for anything that turns on and off. Uh, you can set up little alerts for 6 or $7. dollars. Uh, the code's going to be up on GitHub. Hopefully, I'll remember to link that in the, the description. Uh, but if not, if I don't remember the description, someone will comment. But uh, my GitHub is github.com forward slash metalx1000. The project's going to be called Hardware. And then just look under the ESP folder, and it should be in there. Probably be called Water Pump or something like that. And it's very, very simple. All you have to do is take that code, put in your access point, your router's name, your router's SSID, uh, your router's... Uh, passphrase and then the two URLs that you want to connect to and then you can also adjust there's variables for the time on how long it delays before it sends out that second alert uh, or the repeating alerts so it's very very simple you just change those variables at top push it to your ESP8266 and you're good to go I do thank you for watching please visit filmsbychris.com that's Chris the K there's a link in the description as always I hope that you have a great day